This chair is silent. The footstool creaks a bit when you put your feet on it. This couch always makes a whoop whoop sound when you sit on it. This table goes nom 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 nom. Lately, I found my living room to be a bit dull. Maybe you have as well, or perhaps you wish your home had some of the life or death drama of the jungle mixed with robotics? Well, you're in luck because this week we're reviewing carnivorous furniture. Now I don't mean this terrifying thing from Pee Wee's Playhouse, I'm referring to a new kind of robotics that's been put together by the dynamic designing duo of James Auger and Jimmy Lozo. These two Englishmen reached the entirely logical conclusion that if your house has a mouse problem, surely your table can earn its keep by doing something about it. They've come up with five robots that all consume pests in a similar way to the pitcher plant or Venus flytrap, then use a microbial fuel cell to mimic the bacteria-driven energy production found in most animals and plants like those I just mentioned. This energy is generally used up in the running of the robot, like the mouse catching table that uses the energy to power its energy display and the iris on the opening of its mouth. You've also got a lamp that catches flies and moths to power LED nightlights that go on when its bulb is turned off, a fly-eating digital clock, and what can be considered either the weakest or the strongest of the pack, a fly-stealing robot. Yes, this guy is built to attract a spider to build a web on it. Then, using sensors and a little robotic arm, it steals dead flies from the web to help power itself. So yes, weakest if you like spiders, and strongest if you like being a dick to spiders. Notice I said help power itself. It actually needs additional energy provided by an ultraviolet fly killer with its own fly catching microbial fuel cell that lends energy to the fly stealer, which isn't so much furniture as art, robotic art that is a total dick to the spider, which I presume has to be sent care packages by its mum since your robot keeps stealing all of its food. The concept is strong, but when it comes to being self-sustaining robots, all of them except the table and the clock fail in this regard because they require additional energy provided by traditional means. On top of that, they also need a steady supply of vermin, which means you either have to live in a crap house or you have to take special measures to attract vermin into your home. Plus, every machine requires at least some regular cleaning and maintenance. Do any of you watching this want to add scour the table of mouse droppings, comma, mouse residue to your chore lists? But if I had to pick a favorite, and I kind of do since I'm doing a review here, I would go with the fly-powered clock. It serves a purpose beyond extermination, it provides all of its own power, and while I don't know as I'd want it in my living room, I can see how it'd be very useful in, say, the offices of a junkyard, or placed inside the kitchen of one of those restaurants that gets shut down every three months. Meanwhile, the idea of a flesh-eating robot might be a little alarming, and justifiably so. However, as it stands, we're doing okay. These robots are meant to be an intermediary stage, eventually leading to robots that don't need us to survive, because they just eat flies and vermin and so on, and theoretically this could take us eventually to some kind of matrix scenario where instead of being preserved in a virtual reality world, we're just devoured. But as it stands, any robot with a large enough microbial fuel cell to you know, digest something as big as a person would require a lot of additional energy provided by traditional means, aka additional energy provided by some other like enabling human. Therefore, if a person was going to be eaten by a robot, that robot would still need help from another person, so it would be a person using a machine to kill a person, also known as business as usual. Okay, cut. <laughs> Jay Oliver, don't you normally have a joke at the end? F*** you! How's that for a joke at the end? Anyways, I'm gonna go get a snack from the kitchen before we do the next one, okay? Oi, oriba. Go suru toni wa anata ga Michael Jackson no raize no pati ni watashi u ero no omiyasu. あいあ、なんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんなんな
It serves a purpose beyond extermination, provides all of its own power, and makes me forget the rest of the line. The concept is strong, but all of the robots fail as self-sufficient robots since they require additional energy from your mom. Who is fusion powered, <laughs> I guess. Cold fusion. Cold. She's a cold fusion woman. God.